three, two, one. Hello, welcome to the Saving with Steve show where we talk about the ins and outs of money. Pretty much everything under the center relates to you having a happy, healthy relationship with money. Now, you know what? I want to thank you for joining us here again. My name is Steve Sexton right here on Saving with Steve. You know what? I really appreciate you sharing with your friends and family and associates. We're expanding here nationally, obviously overseas through the, uh, through I think almost 56 countries now. So we're just getting, getting larger and larger. And I want to thank you so much for just being there and sharing with us. Last week, we had Paul Levinson, the founder of the Happy Healthy Human Academy. You know what? Paul talked to people about sabotaging themselves or getting in their own way. Paul walked us through his three pillars of wellness work, helped you, you know, help people overcome that, that doubt so you can make more money and live, you know, and do things you actually love. You know, if you're interested in going to check out that episode, go to savingwithsteve.us at savingwithsteve.us and look for episode number 95. Now, today I'm going to be talking about money moves retirees never regret. Um, big thing, big thing, big thing, but we have one special guest today. And her, her name is Quinn Driscoll. You know, one of the biggest challenges, especially with the great resignation, with business owners, accidental entrepreneurs, you know what, but they, they have it, but they really talk about it. It's what it's called. It's called holding on to that employee mindset and rather than moving into a CO mindset. You know, Quinn Driscoll, you know, she's calm, she has a calm presence, she's simple, you know, she has simple methods to help empower people to stop them riding that wave and start the, sharing their step of their finances. You know, if you're a business owner or accident entrepreneur, you're going to love this. You're definitely going to love this. So we're going to pause. Okay, Cameron, we're about to get started with Quinn. So now, first of all, I'd like to introduce everybody to Quinn Driscoll. You can see she's a beautiful lady on the screen. Um, you know what? One of the biggest things that people don't know about Quinn is this. She's a CPA, a business coach, a money mentor. She's the founder of the, her company called a Value Gal. She brings Wall Street knowledge to Main Street business owners through coaching programs that teach financial skills and strategy. Now, here's the cool thing. Prior to Value Gal, Quinn spent more than a decade as a sought-after financial expert witness who worked in the high-stakes world of litigation consulting. You guys don't know how intense that is. I have a few friends that do <laughs> stuff like that and they're like, okay, I'm done. Uh, but to really make it work and be a valuable witness, that's big. She's a frequent speaker, guest expert on financial topics, including building a valuable business, money mindset, goal setting for business owners and more. So Quinn, that was a whole mouthful, but welcome to the show. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. So happy to be here. Yeah, you know what? We're really happy for you to be here too because our blogs are kind of popping up about, um, you know, what we kind of tease what you're going to talk about. Um, you know what? Uh, I just like to start talking about, you know, the, the great resignation and, you know, the statistics that go along with that and how long tenured employees um, <clears throat> are increasingly quitting their job and you know what? There, there. We have a lot of people that are that accidental entrepreneur now. <laughs> yes, just like myself. I'm not as long tenured, but I am definitely an accidental entrepreneur. So I have seen, um, you know, some different statistics, but a lot suggesting that recently the rates of the older, longer tenured workers leaving the workforce are getting higher and higher and surpassing the younger generation. So there's a just a lot of indicators that um, people are getting ready for their second act and they are ready to move on from uh, maybe corporate life and do something different. That's, you know, it's really interesting because um, when we first started with COVID, um, we saw a number of companies go through this, okay, I need to purge some salaries. So they started going after those people in their mid fifties. Uh, and I actually have a, a few clients in the financial planning business where, you know what, you know, 57, 58, all of a sudden this level of management just got cut out, but you know, it's a multi hundred thousand dollar salary salary. And when you start cutting out two or 300 like that, you're getting a lot of money savings there. And what was really interesting is a lot of them got asked to be hired back at say 
two thirds of what they're getting paid before. And some were, you know, hey, I'm going to be here for a couple of years. I'll do that. But others said, no, see you, bye. I'm going to go do this on my own. So we see that now with inflation um, and with all the changes in the market, we're seeing some companies either hiring and some are saying, hey, you know what? It's time to retrench a little bit. So people could be pushed out into that accidental entrepreneur space as well. So there's a lot, a lot of stuff going on there. Now, um, what are some of the lessons that entrepreneurs could take from the corporate world to build a successful business? Yes. Yeah, so one, one of the big things is if you think about how a really large corporation works and what they need to be successful, those are the same principles that apply to a small business, just on a much smaller scale. So one thing that you want to think about is, you know, the CEO of a large company has a board of directors and there's a board of directors for a reason. It's because you need input from people with different skill sets and different expertise and experiences to help you with what you don't know. So the beautiful thing about being your own boss and expertise or, and, you know, in a small business is that you get to choose who you surround yourself with. So you, you know, it's really important to think from the beginning of your business that whether it's a peer circle or a mastermind group or a coach with a different, you know, skill set that you just don't have from your corporate background, um, really think about the things that make like major corporation successful and bring those things into your business on a smaller scale. Um, so definitely don't try to do everything by yourself. Remember that you probably had a team and the CEO of a large company has so many advisors and people working with them. So don't wait on kind of bringing in the people who have been there to help you. Oh, here's and the a, second thing- Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. The second thing is don't discount your expertise. So you were successful in your corporate job for a reason. So, you know, even if you are someone who was um, pushed out unexpectedly or wasn't, um, wasn't quite ready to be an entrepreneur, start, um, you know, start talking to people about what you know and really documenting what were your wins in your corporate job. You can pull out your old performance reviews and you know look at the things that people said that you were good at and just remind yourself that, I mean, this is a crazy, crazy time where you can have a business that is anything, honestly. So you have so many skills, if you're a long tenured employee, so much experience to draw on. And so it's really helpful just to start jotting those things down. And those will really help kind of spark the ideas of what you should be focusing on in your business. Okay. So one of our uh, questions from our viewers blog, just on the first portion of this answer, the question, you talk about building a board and, um, uh, Amy from San Jose says, you know what, what about having my friends on this board? Ooh, well, that's an interesting <laughs> question. Um, I would say, you know, you need to think about, I would say first think about the roles and the objectives that you want to fill and then think about the people who would be good at that. So instead of starting with the people, start with the roles or start with the skills. So if you're thinking like um, for myself, I'm, you know, I'm a CPA, I have a financial background. I never had to sell anything in my life before I started my business. That is one thing where it's like, I need somebody who is going to help me figure out sales and marketing. That's, you know, number one priority. So whatever, you know, whatever those things are, if it is financial, if it is, you know, you know, you're going to need other people to work with you, um, building a team 
or just other entrepreneurs who have are in a similar space that you'd like to just benefit from their experience, I would say to start with the, you know, the roles that you want to fill and then think about the people to fill those roles. And if you have great friends who have all of the skills you need, that's great. Um, but yeah, to, to kind of think about it in that, um, in that order. And the, the other part, I just want to add my own two cents because I've, I've lived through this I've before, through this before. Um, is, uh, is that you want to have a friend that's going to tell you the unvarnished truth. Mm -hmm. uh, and what I mean by that is you know what if you're not being a, a good person or acting out of out of line they don't have a problem telling you that you're that a-hole so they they can say they don't, they don't sugarcoat it they just say hey this is the way you want to do it and so you don't have to worry about somebody saying yes <laughs> yes agree you want to have somebody whose advice you trust and who is going to give it to you straight yes I because in your own business, you really don't have time to sugarcoat too many things. Otherwise, it just doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. um, so now, now I'd like to, you know what, there's a lot of people taking that second act and they're, you know what, in their mid 50s, late 40s, early 60s. You know what, what are some of the common misconceptions about starting a business as a second act? Yeah, I would say the big one is believing that you can't do it because you're too something. So if it's the second act, it's too old, you know, too shy, too um, specialized in your field that there just isn't opportunity. Um, my personal experience and belief is that if you have that mindset that you can learn new things, you're not too anything. I mean, it's really going in with the expectation that the first several times of anything is practice and that you're going to get better as you go. So, you know, to feel like when you are a long tenured employee who has been great at your job, you know what you're doing, you feel like you need to get everything perfect the first time. And it's really hard, really hard shift to realize that when you're starting something totally new, it is, it's just not going to be perfect the first time. And that's, that's part of the, that's part of the journey. It just is part of how it goes is you have to practice and you have to just jump in and do new things and realize that it does get easier. Yeah. You know, you just got to equate it back to being in basketball in third basketball. grade where you didn't know how to dribble the ball <laughs> and it bounced off your shoe in about three months you get to the point hey well that doesn't happen anymore this is great <laughs> so right I've I've realized so much with uh, my kids I have two young kids and they'll be like you know like tying my shoes is so hard and it's like well we just got to practice but you forget it and you know as an adult it's like you forget that you don't know how to do anything the first time and it really is just practice. It's cool. Over time and practice brings mastery. So that's wonderful. Hey, look, everybody, we're going to take a break right now. We're going to uh, stick with us. We'll be right back with more Quinn Driscoll and Saving with Steve. All right, perfect. Hey, Cameron, we just finished uh, the intro in segment number one with Quinn Driscoll. We're going to be moving into segment number two and in about five seconds. Okay. Three, four, five. Hey, welcome back to the Saving with Steve show where we talk about the ins and outs of money. Pretty much everything under the sun that relates to money. Um, you know what? If you're looking for some replays, you can always go to savingwithsteve.us. If you're enjoying the stories of helpful information and insight on Saving with Steve, I encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel, our Google Play channel. And you know what? I want to appreciate our affiliates, UK Health Radio, BBS Radio, AMFM 247. Uh, Talk Radio, New York City, and E360 TV. All these networks are dedicated to empowering you to solve problems, uplift your spirit, and live a life of personal financial freedom. If you'd like to follow us on Facebook uh, and get some guest gifts, behind the scenes stuff, go to Saving with Steve section. Now we're back with Quinn Driscoll, the value gal. Now, one of the things I wanted to ask, um, <clears throat> what are, 
you know what, and I was reading over your bio and possible questions. And you know what, I, I look at this and go, you know what, am, am, am I doing this as a person that runs my own businesses or multiple businesses? What are the three ways that an employee mindset, mindset blocks business growth? Yeah, so this is a great question. So first I want to talk about what I mean by employee mindset. So when you are in your business or when you are in corporate, sorry, you, you know, you look around and you see what other people doing are doing and you listen to what people are telling you about how you're doing. And that's how you judge if you're doing a good job. And so when you, uh, when you get into your own business and you are still in that employee mindset, you it's really easy to get stuck because you might be holding on to, you know, you're feeling guilty that you're not working normal hours, right? We, you know, you're so ingrained to nine to five and then, you know, you open up the computer from eight to 10 every night. And that is what the, you know, that's what you do when you're working hard. And another one would be like finding unnecessary busy work to fill those hours because you're not, you know, if you're not doing anything, you're not being productive, you're not um, doing what you're supposed to be doing. And, you know, another thing is thinking about, um, just thinking about your ability to make money as an entrepreneur in the same way of when you're an employee, maybe salary or hourly employee, that you need to work more hours in order to make more money. So if you are stuck in these types of um, you know, types of thought patterns, you're really hindering your growth because maybe what really sparks your um, idea of how to get through a problem is stopping and going for a walk in the middle of the afternoon. And, or maybe it's, um, you know, not doing the thing that you're comfortable doing. Like for me, I, I build, you know, I build hourly um, financial consulting work for so long that it's like, if I'm not in a spreadsheet doing something that I can see at the end of the day, for a long time, it felt like I'm not working. I'm not doing what I need to do, even if it's really that meeting with people and talking to business owners and talking about uh, money in their business is really what's driving my business forward. So it's, you know, kind of reshaping the way that you think about being productive, the way that you think about the hours that you need to work and the way that you think about what it takes to actually make money that can hinder your business growth. Well, you know what? I was just thinking of going, okay, I did that one, did that one. Did that one. <laughs> but I think we all do that though. Cause I, I think, you know, my problem is I think things should be moving faster than they are. And it just drives me nuts. And you know what, even though I work at multiple things, I think, you know what, I've got some dead time. What should I be doing here? <laughs> yes. I get that. I totally get that. Um, you know what? Um, one of the things that I really want to get to today, because we have about six, seven minutes ago, is how can you move out of that employee mindset into a CEO mindset? Yes. So one of the, you know, one of the big things that is really hard about going from an employee to entrepreneur is that you don't have those indicators of when you're doing a good job. So you have to build in time for yourself to reflect on the wins. So, you know, you don't, you start thinking like, well, am I just shouting into the universe? Like, I hear this all the time from entrepreneurs who are in the early stages. Like, am I, just, is anybody listening to me? Is anybody hearing what I'm saying? Does, do I make any sense? And so it's stopping to think about those, you know, the small wins about, you know, today I went to a networking event and when I was talking about my business, people were really interested in asking me questions. Like that is a win um, that I know I'm on the right track. Um, that, you know, things like that, where you're really stopping to think about those wins that are kind of intangible that are going to keep you going. And 
another thing would be, I think, just trying to really step into or maybe step back and forth between a doer and a visionary. So you kind of need to, you need to have both where you can um, stop and be the visionary CEO that's thinking about where am I going with my business? Like, what do I really want to achieve with my business? And then switching back into the doer of, okay, let's work backwards. What are the tasks that I need to do to get there? Or what are the people, who are the people that I need to bring in to do those different things? So it's, you know, it's just a multifaceted um, type of mindset where you need to be able to kind of, I like to say, zoom in and zoom out, where you're looking at the big picture and then you're looking at the day to day and finding that balance that works for you. That's wonderful. Now, um, we have a few minutes left. I, I want to uh, talk about your business a little bit. Uh, I'd like to talk a little bit about um, your uh, uh, money mindset guide. And I'd just like to just hey, tell everybody what it's all about. Uh, we're going to make sure everybody can get it. They can go to the savingwithsteve.us website. Just go to the resource tab and you'll be able to get um, Quinn Driscoll's The Value Gals um, Money Mindset Guide. So if you could tell us a little bit about that, that'd be wonderful. Sure. So um, you've heard me talk a little bit about being a CPA. So money and numbers are my zone of genius that I love to help business owners with. And you've also heard me talk a lot about just the struggles of being an entrepreneur and the ups and downs and how important it is to stay positive. So one thing that is really interesting and crazy about um, just being humans is um, a concept called negativity bias. And that means that your brain is wired to remember negative things that happen five times more than positive. So for a lot of people who have negative past experiences with money and negative feelings around money, that just keeps perpetuating because you feel like I don't know what I'm doing. And especially when you add the pressure on top of it of, and now I own a business and now everything is relying on me to make that, you know, to make ends meet that it can be really hard to, you know, want to stay on top of your finances and want to, um, get a good handle on them when you have kind of all of this negativity from the past holding you back. So I have my money mindset guide. It is um, just a quick and easy and actionable tool that you can use to start um, racking up some of those positive um, thoughts and experiences with money um, to help you just look around and start to see kind of those everyday indicators that, you know what, you already have what it takes. You can be great with money and you just have to start with those baby steps to start um, realizing that that's the truth and um, to feel like you can really get a good handle on your finances. Well, that's, that's a great tool for everybody. Look, again, you can go to the Value, the Value Gals website, or you can go to the savingwithsteve.us, go to the resource tab. It'll be right there for you. All you got to do is click it and you can take it. Um, you know what, Quinn, how do people get a hold of you? They, they'd like to uh, utilize you, get your help. Yeah, so a um, great place to go is my website, thevaluegal.com. I have a lot of resources on there. I've got a link if you want to hop on a free strategy session call and talk about money in your business. Um, and another place to find me if you are more of a social media person is on Instagram at Value Gal Quinn. And there's a lot of information on there about my um, coaching services. Quinn, I want to thank you so much for coming on the Saving with Steve show today. It was wonderful because there is a massive transition that, you know, what people are making right now because of all that's going on in the world and making sure you have the right, right mindset will make all the difference in the world. So I want to thank you for being here. I wish you uh, safe and healthiness and I, I appreciate you being with it. Have a great day. Thanks, Steve. You too. Hey, Cameron, uh, we're, we're back here. Uh, Quinn's finished. Um, and I'm going to kick this off one more time to finish 
my portion of it. Hey, welcome back to the Saving with Steve show where we talk about the ins and outs of money. Again, I want to talk to you and say thanks to our affiliates at UK Health Radio, BBS Radio, AM FM 247, Talk Radio in New York City. All these networks are dedicated to empowering you to solve problems, unlift your spirit, and live a life of personal and financial freedom. Again, if you would like to listen and find out information, you know what? There's nothing wrong with going to viewers at savingwithsteve.us. That's viewers at savingwithsteve.us and say, you know what? I want to find out about this. You know what? And you know what? Why, the reason why I want to hear, um, you, you, the reason why I say that is because of this. The next segment is all about, you know what? How money moves, the money moves that retirees never regret. So let's deal with some no regret and let's talk about those money moves. Number one, getting out of debt, eliminating debt before you enables you to, re to earn interest and set a pay in interest. Many people carry high interest rates revolving debt accounts. I mean, I mean, credit cards and so on, which means your expenses go up. And right now when interest rates go up, so does your interest rate. Making your monthly budget unpredictable, especially in retirement, especially if you have those increasing debts. And for this reason, eliminating debt is one of the most top priorities, especially when you're, you're, you know what, when you're looking towards retirement. And this is one of the things that I work with clients on, especially when they're preparing for retirement. The next, you know what, saving and investing more. Retirement is a long-term accumulation event. You've heard of dollar cost averaging. What dollar cost averaging is, is you start buying into the market, you put $100 a week. And you know what? When the market's down, you can buy more shares, which means you accumulate more because that's all saving for retirement's about. The earlier you start saving and investing, the more financially secure you'll be in, in your golden year. Once you've started, the key is to stay the course and be consistent. The goal is to amass more than, more than you expect to need in retirement which will enable you to preserve more travel, hobbies, experiences, especially in your golden years. Have a realistic retirement plan. Figure out how much money you'll need in retirement from all your income sources. That includes social security, savings, pensions, rental income, and more. The key here is to be realistic and honest with yourself about these estimates. Hey, don't think you're going to make 10 or 12% a year, especially with the, uh, the, um, the markets only average 8.15 for the last 20 years or so, but even then, make sure you understand the sequence of returns to make sure you have a reasonable rate of return so you're not pulling yourself short just because you overestimated. Now, be, have a realistic retirement plan requires you to think outside the box, you know, not just the numbers. You have to ask, you know, where do I plan to live when I retire? What will I do in retirement? Do I have a plan to work part-time or volunteer? How much do I plan to travel? These are important lifestyle questions that will help you develop a more accurate, realistic retirement plan for the long term. You want to have a plan that's based off your truths, not assumptions. Understanding what insurance plans work for you, whether it's a life insurance, long-term care covers, make sure you don't leave that rock unturned. Studies show 70% of people over the age of 65 will need some sort of long-term care. This is a big number. So I advise you to start looking into this as early as possible because the rates will be less expensive. Not all policies are the same. So this is a time to do your due diligence and make sure you know what you're getting into, whether it be long-term care, life insurance, Medicare, there's always a little ins and outs and those icebergs under the sea are the ones that get you. Maximizing Social Security, hey, you can start collecting at age 62 and maximize your benefits at age 70. The reality is 57% of people take their Social Security early. Why? You know what? Sometimes it's because I've worked this hard and I want the money. Others, they think Social Security is going to go away. Folks, this is not the way to do it. 57% of people, if they just wait a little bit longer with their Social Security, they can accumulate more assets. Look for ways to maximize your Social Security in the context of your retirement to match not only your income, but your retirement savings. And again, you got to be looking at the long term. Last but not least, have an estate plan. If you know what, if you own something and love somebody, you have an estate plan. Make sure you have a trust, a will, a power of attorney over financial and health. Okay, it makes sure it addresses all those things. These documents should be readily accessible to somebody you trust in the event you're not able to make financial or medical decisions. Quite frankly, a couple of those documents will save your life. Now, 
I want to thank you all for joining us right here on Saving with Steve. Uh, you know what? You can always go to savingwithsteve.us to enjoy those replays, get guest gifts, helpful stories. You know what? I encourage you to never miss an episode. I'll look forward to seeing you all next week right here on Saving with Steve. Stay safe, stay healthy. We'll look forward to seeing you again. Bye-bye.